Hi Marcia, welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you, Julie. It's a pleasure to be here with you. So I'm going to let Marcia explain to the viewers what exactly she does. So Marcia, can we start by talking about the organizations you work with and then we can go on to why you chose what you're doing at the moment. Of course. Um, I partner with many organizations. One of them is ASGON, African Asian Scholars Global Network, yeah. which is the Global South Universities gathering, getting together to be able to provide an alternative perspective or several alternative perspectives to our communities internationally for all the world to have alternatives. We have UN deliverables that we are not be able to do because we're just using a monocultural framework. So this is a, a beautiful network of scholars from all over the global south that are gathering and are going to open an institute for, for research, open source research, collaborations, so then we can come up with new solutions. I am their creative and innovation advisor because artists and scientists are to work together for us to find solutions that are beyond the frameworks we recognize yeah. to get out of the box. And I also work with an organization, Women for Peace in Germany, in which for many years is gathering momentum where we have women's voices, which is 50% of the population of the world, women who have traditionally, culturally, be nurturing life in many different ways the land children looking after the elder and the sick so the care for life is something that takes a lot of beautiful energy and effort in contraposition to war and destruction so women for peace also work at different levels with agriculture coffee organic coffee produced by women in Brazil, and then we're trying to reach out historical momentums of relationship that Germany and Brazil migration and how that evolves nowadays and how we can heal the past through our relationship. So I work with Alexander and uh, Women for Peace and Abdul Adwali and uh, Asgon to be able to deliver that. Also in Brazil, we have a group of women. Uh, I'm a curator and I work with uh, uh, Maria, who is another curator that I have uh, develop a group of African Portuguese speaking women and Brazilian women, including Amerindian, to have a visual um, portrait of uh, our sustainability issues. So artists working together. Uh, yeah. We had an exhibition in the Museum of North of Minas Gerais. So it's about gathering momentum of different voices so being spoken and then we can actually change the narrative. So let us talk about Women for Peace from Germany. So can you elaborate on your role with Women of Peace? I am an artist advisor and I, I did run workshops in Germany where we did innovation in terms of our sense of togetherness because I can speak or sing simultaneously to people in the 7,000 human languages. So there were other artists in which uh, case we, we run workshops based on our Amerindian traditional ways of gathering as a group and thinking together as a group. And this was my uh, contribution. I also wrote a song, Women for Peace. Yeah. It's like, um, Women for Peace. Mulheres pela paz. So how we gather, drink coffee in the morning, wake up, tea, whatever you, you know, you connect with earth and life and then envisage a new world. So, uh, Marcia, do you, do you want to talk about uh, how do you integrate your visual art work with the organization Women of Peace in Germany? The group Women for Peace has gone into many different layers, as I mentioned, working with agriculture, coffee, made and produced by women and and is, is an ongoing process, working with the land, working with our voices. So I work with visual arts, the paintings that I do, and I had an exhibition there. Also, I incorporate in the video of the song I have created for Women for Peace. I'm also a singer, songwriter, composer. 
And I went there to do workshops, in which case we, we I was able to speak simultaneously to people in Germany, other languages of people present, all of them voicing, all the women voicing their desire for peace. Peace is not just the absence of war. So I was just speaking simultaneously in a circle to everyone who was uh, voicing their desire for peace. I can also sing what people say in prose. So it's a way of saying we can do new things together as a society. Yeah. And I'm returning to Germany very soon to be able to continue the work. So, Marcia, I think you talked about some workshops. So do you want to elaborate on what exactly did you do with those workshops, promoting peace? It's uh, a linguistic leap what I do, to be able to fully hear someone and emulate what they are saying. I just do not speak 7,000 languages, I do not understand. I am able to echo and to mirror what people are doing. And in the workshops, I invite people to be able to fully hear each other without interpreting, judging, finding meaning, but just basically being with, because be is enough. Just being is enough. So being together in different ways in which we have total acceptancy is part of the workshop. So I do in a circle, we, you know, we express sounds without meaning, then eventually people tell the stories that are really important to them and the other person may not be able to understand the language, but it's fully there. It doesn't have any obligation of remembering, judging, analyzing. And then people realize and they move to tears because at one moment, it's just like, I'm being fully there with you and I can actually start calibrating my heart rate, my breathing, my being with you. And that is sufficient. We have rituals, we do things, we do business, we dance, we talk, we do many things socially. But being together, in essence, is the essence of being, the totality of our being, in our diversity and complementarity. So that's part of the workshop I provide. And then people feel free to innovate and also to just be themselves. So Marcia, I think you have created some wonderful artwork and use those artworks during your workshops as well, promoting peace. So do you want to talk about that? Yes, it's how we create narratives. I will give you an example about the wars we are facing at the moment. Often it's the case that we justify war because we say we are protecting. Yes. Yeah. So yes. here you have a soldier that is protecting a family. And the image of a the children and the mother or the preservation of life and people are not this is spoken by jackson a south african artist outside artist he said people are not stones when you carry them together in a basket they're like eggs yes. so it's the care and love we have for our sense of togetherness so what i do with this is a bit like a jigsaw puzzle for consciousness understanding so every time we justify that we're defending in fact we are attacking yeah and for us to realize that the bread life is everyone's right. We have here what is very new in our community in the world, which is deserters, women soldiers, which was not common before. And then this is a woman who is deserting the war, walking a different path towards the sun. And here there are words of peace in all different human languages. Yes. So to say that, you know, we want war no more. We want life and the preservation of life. And we are capable of transforming society. There was a time where Christianity was done, you know, before um, Christianity developed, for instance. I just I speak with all the people and I work with all different religions, something that I've done before. I work with mental health, equality and religious backgrounds, the differences of the narrative, how it complements each other. So there was a time that the Romans were doing crucifixion and in other countries as well, different places. So and that was done by the state, and people actually accept this normality. We no longer do crucifixion, apart from, you know, isolated cases. So at the time, may have been the question, is it on palation? Is it crucifixion? Nowadays, in many wars that we are being faced with, we're still trying to argue sides. We're still trying to, you know, use a logic that is illogical to actually understand what life is in context and how war needs to be completely and can be completely eradicated as crucifixion. So we evolve as humans, each generation adding a step to the legacy of our ancestors. Yeah. I think you're doing some wonderful work. Unfortunately, 
I cannot do justice to all the, that you do. But if my viewers are interested, they can go into the description and see exactly what Marcia is doing and the kind of organization she is attached with. Marcia, thank you so much for joining me today. At the moment, we are almost on the brink of war and world war, actually. And I think your work is very, very important. And I, I applaud you for that. All of us are similar, unique, and all of us are important in creating who we want to be. We know who we were and who we are, but we are also capable in our creativity to create a whole new society, engagement with sustainability, with each other in kingship. And this is an opportunity to reflect upon it. Do we want total destruction of not only our human lives, but also nature? Or do we want to transform the society in something that is completely collectively intelligent and capable of love, eternal, infinite love. So thank you so much for joining me today, Marcia. Thank you, Julie. It was a pleasure. So if you guys have not subscribed to my channel, do subscribe. I think I feature women from around the world. This year I'm featuring women-led organizations from around the world doing some wonderful work. So do subscribe. Thank you so much.